Now, we do have, hopefully, Cash Asmussen coming on to have a chat with us in a few moments, but uh, just have a little look at some of the footage we have put together here. There'll be plenty of champions that you remember. Here comes Swab Dawson with a swoop on the outside, of in the crew. We've got a furlong to go, and it's Mr. Lee in the lead from Swab Dawson, who has taken the card field apart. This is Swab Dawson. This is a top class racehorse, and it's Swab Dawson at home now. And it's Swab Dawson from Magic Knight as they come to take the line. It's Swab Dawson's arm. He is the winner. Mambo switched to the inner, still hasn't made his move, he's looking for room, they come up with a furlong to go, Needle Gun still in front of Vetri Quattrofoli, now he finds an opening on King Mambo, he's out after the leader now from Wharf who can't do any better, 150 yards to go, Cash says go on King Mambo, King Mambo on the near side, Rangers up, grabs the lead now from Needle Gun, and King Mambo is too good for them, King Mambo goes on the win by a length and a half. Momchoy and Cash Asmussen coming there on the near side of Tchaikovsky and Beatall and racing now to the final furlong. It's Momchoy and Cash Asmussen ranging up on the near side and it's the French Derby winner and Cash riding away on Momchoy in the colours of Marshall Tabor to win in great style. Cash gets the money by winning the Derby on Momchoy. Many, many, many happy memories, and uh, thankfully we can speak to him on the, the line right now. Good evening, Cash. How are you? Hello, Jason. How are you? Yeah, absolutely fantastic, buddy. Now, we managed to have a quick, brief chat with you last year, of course. We want to we wanna catch up on everything, Cash. How are you? What are you doing? Everybody remembers you. And lots of people have been emailing in tonight with a few questions for you a little bit later on. What are you up to? How are you feeling? How's everybody? Uh, everybody. Everybody's good. The three daughters and uh, misses are doing well and uh, buying and selling a few horses, uh, getting a few ready, sending some to my brother, uh, doing a bit of the breeze up business, exporting a few to Hong Kong, staying busy, but things are good. And uh, Cash, you're still obviously keeping yourself very, very busy. The Breeders' Cup's just been over at, at Santa Anita. What did you make of the, the European Challenge? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, a, a bit unlucky in a couple of the races. Um, of course, I won't have to tell you that I was you know, very proud for Steve. My brother had a big weekend. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what... Uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather ask you what you thought of the European Challenge. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, Cash, I mean, the, the, the boys, um, I think one or two of them got caught out a little bit at Santa Anita. We know, especially on the turf, rounding in. We had Christophe Lemaire was in fantastic form. Flotilla for the French trainer, of course, uh, Mikel. De Zangler, but right. um, I just feel our boys now and again they went down the paint and it never really panned out for them. I mean, I, I think that I think we've both been there. What uh, just bringing these horses back from big sweeping tracks to small, small tight tracks, and I mean, the, the seven furlong turf course for a European horse is very tight. What I always found is first time they're a bit lost and it takes them some time to get their feet under them. But as you're going over for the Breeders' Cup, and if it's the first time, you're going to be put. You're going to be put in a bad spot. I mean, you're going to. You need some toe. You're going to have to be well placed. And if the inner doesn't open and you don't have a running, I mean, there's going to be a lot of hard luck stories, as there is in any tight track. Yeah, and, and Cash, I mean, the the main difference is you rode all over the world, but you know, back in the states. Just from the gates, from, from that minute that they pop open, they're trained to absolutely run in the States. And our, our horses sometimes just not, they're not the quickest away. And your troubles start from there. That makes the rest of the race much, much harder. No, it's, uh, I, I mean, I would, yeah, you know, I, I much prefer a bigger sweeping track and not because I felt uncomfortable on a tight one. But I think the public would agree. You, you pay to see clear. And you don't want to see a bunch of sob stories, and you want to see the best horse in the race get a chance to show how good he is, not necessarily be blocked in, no place to go, a bit murky. I mean, you, the, the, the American races are cleaner on the turf when there's plenty of pace. Sure. If there's not tons of pace, it's just gonna, it, it's just not, it, it's just, it's just dirty water. And, I mean, for you, you had to adapt from being over in the States, racing on the bowling green, left-handed, being on the turf or the dirt, 
all the time and, and fractions, split second decisions, you know, making the difference between winning and losing. And you come over and you, you, you arrive in France and a completely different tempo. That must have took a, a, a massive amount of adaption on your part, Cash. I think, that, I, I think I was probably crying out for it, actually. I mean, I think that sometimes I would, I mean, the English would even say there's plenty of people listening at the minute that thought I was too far out of my ground in England for the horses to make it up. I mean, I think you need to ride horses the way they're trained. Sure. And, of course, the, the French horses are trained to, to go easy early on, and they have that wonderful finish. But I think in America, I mean, I had won a 1,000 races before I came to Europe. But I think I was crying out for some of the of the European style, which, I mean, I think you could probably say between Francois Bouton and... Uh, the Niarcos family and their group, I mean, good on them for, for bringing me from America to, to Europe. But no how much you had left in the tank it meant everything. And another thing, I, mean, I think horses wanted to relax for me. I think I, I, wanted, I wanted horses to relax and breathe and knew that when I pressed the button, as long as I could get close enough to the post without having to press it too quick, I mean, they they would be exciting. I mean, they they would be, they would fly, and and I, I mean, I think that I had to use that as my strength. Get them to relax. Don't take them out of the race. And if you're going a mile and a quarter, and it takes you two minutes and one second to do it, use a minute and thirty five seconds of that two minutes to build their heart. And to just they're begging for you to turn them loose, and you're not disappointing them. And after a minute and 35 seconds, make them think they're, they're King Kong. I mean, that, that's what I would try to use in my tank. And, Cash, fascinating for the youngsters who are listening now, the kids who are trying to better themselves. And I, I always remember having a chat with you, and you were saying before that you would sit in the weighing room as a young jockey and try to take the best part of each rider, the best sort of uh, tactic that he had, be it pace, be it aggression, be it coolness, be it temper, attitude, whatever. You were always trying to improve yourself, and that's something that the, the youngsters now need to take on board, that you didn't get to the heady heights just by thinking it was all going to be there for you anyway. No, definitely not. No, I think that any time, and, let, and let's go one step farther, we're not just talking about race riders. Let's talk about life in general. Any time you come in contact, with something that is a positive, something that you can use in your life and your profession. And it, it could be incorporated in what you do. That's the road of life for me. I mean, that, that, that keeps me young every day. Every day that I put my hand on or, or something new and I can, I can learn from it, 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 keeps, it keeps me thinking and improving. But no, I, I, I think the travel now for the young riders and the exposure, they get two riders in different countries is just, it's an access that we didn't have before, and it's an education in itself. International challenges, international riders, the European riders going to America, and vice versa. I think anybody who has their eyes open who wants to better themselves, there is no way for them not to absorb some of that education, the experience. Well, fortunately, to New York when there was a great riding colony, and then um, and I came to Europe, and there's many great riders as well. But I, I think that's the road of any profession or the road of life is, is to pick up the positive things that you can incorporate into what you do every day, and then and then that makes you at the end of your life. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's a, a great way of looking at it. A couple of questions for you, Cash. Um, one um, regarding jumping back to the Breeders' Cup, no use of Lasix on the juveniles. What did you make of that? It didn't seem to to make a whole host of difference. Oh well, God, we we we, we don't even have enough time for me to talk about that. We have no uniform drug laws in America. I loved riding in Europe and around the world with no drugs. I leave twenty to the paddock and the saddling paddock now that do have Lasix and Butte and what have you. If, if it was, I'll, I'll condense as best I can, but it's a long subject. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for Any, sure. Who, man, whoever, wait, whoever made the rule to take away Lasix, whenever Lasix can keep a horse from bleeding, and of course we don't want horses to bleed, and of course the strength of the horse is their lungs, and the most fragile part of their body. But I would have rather seen them take away Butte. I would have seen them take away Lasix. I mean, if you have a young horse that's hurting a bit, you'll be able to give him some painkiller in America that you couldn't give him in Europe which if he's a young horse and he's hurting, he's probably crying out for some time. 
but instead of taking away the beauty, you took away the Lasix. No, no, no change, no change. That I, I didn't think that I didn't think the Lasix. Um, I wouldn't see. You would never see as many young horses bleeding as you do older horses that are a bit more fatigued. So no, I, I thought the I, I didn't I didn't think I think it was a no material. And if I would have taken anything away from the young horses in America to extend their career and allow them to last longer, I would have taken away the butte. Okay, and, and jumping away from the, the the horses, but still very much in racing. Frankie Dettori going to be out on his own next year. That's going to be a, a new challenge for Dettori. And you saw him cash come up through the, the weighing room when you were over in England, when he was over in France. I mean, a world-class rider. Um, it'll, be, it'll be strange not seeing him sort of so much associated with the boys in blue. No, definitely. But I mean, you know, top-class rider. I mean, uh, performance speaks for itself. Um... You, you you always want to wait. The only question for me was is whenever whenever Francois Bouton passed away, and the New York horse the New York horse fam, family's horses split up into different places. It created a new a new look for me. I mean, and as you well know, no matter how good you are, you have to have ammunition. So it just depends on how much independent ammunition there is out there. The, you know that the. the the pie has changed. France is not the same as it was maybe when I went, when you had all of the big contracts and all of the big stables needed to have their own stable rider. Because when a big race came up, if they had a good horse, but they didn't have a stable rider, all of the stable riders were taken. So therefore, everybody wanted to pay whoever they wanted a contract to retain their services whenever they needed it. Well, then there were plenty of jocks that became independent. So there was no need for some of the owners to pay a retained jockey because if they came with a horse that was going to run in the French Derby or the Derby, there was going to be four or five guys out there that were very, very capable and they didn't have to retain them in advance. So think, things have changed over the last 20 years, 25 years. But um, is there, you know, if there's plenty of owners out there with independent stables that have strength, you, you know they'll be calling on Frankie because they, they, would, they would not be wise not to. Yeah, they certainly uh, will. I don't think that he'll go uh, scratching around for a few rides anyway. From Frankie Dettori on to Frankel Cash. What's, um, what, what's your take on Frankel, the, the story of our flat season, basically? Yeah, I mean, beautiful. What, I mean, what, what a horse for racing. What a horse to introduce people to racing and to show them what an actual class sport this can be. Many things are publicized that are negative. Many things are blown up that are negative. Some of the negative is big. But what, there is nothing that you and I could say that he hasn't said tenfold. And that, you know, people, people who don't even necessarily have a practiced appeal to the horse, he could, he could find that feel. I mean, when you, when you, when somebody came to watch him run, or they watched him run, he will he, he could dig feel out of you that, that people didn't know they had, and I think that's what the racehorse is. To get off on it, the, the racehorse and a great racehorse takes people places they cannot go on their own. Not owners, breeders, trainers, jockeys, or the people who watch them, or the people who bet on them. That's that's what that's what makes that's what makes it so special. A great racehorse takes people where they cannot go on their own, and that's why every, everybody wants to get close to one. No matter who you are in life, when you're in love with a racehorse, he will take you places you could never dream of going. And when I see Frankel's films on, on YouTube and I watch the races over and over, and as you all know, some of the races I've ridden and some of the races I've won, he brings people to a new level. Yeah, it's just a, an amazing feeling. He certainly has given us all a huge lift this year. And, of course, Sir Henry Cecil himself going through his troubles. Now, a couple of questions for you, Cash, for emailers have sent in earlier on. Um, which horse gave you the better turn of foot, Suave Dancer or Monju? I thought Suave Ooh. Dancer was more of a smoothly, uh, and Monju more of a brute force ride. But he's interested in your thoughts. Who had the best turn of foot, Cash? I don't know whoever sent in the email must be watching some races. I'll tell you that. I like, <laughs> I like that kind of question. <laughs> Suave dancer probably had more of an electrical, an electrical turn of foot, I and mean, he was, he he could, 
he would accelerate in one jump. Moon Ju could follow any pace and accelerate it w with class. I don't know if over a mile and a quarter the Suave Dancer could beat Moon Ju. It would have been great, but Moon Ju could... They both were bred to stay. I mean, you know, Saddle, Moon Ju, Saddler's Wells, and the dam of Moon Ju finished second in a grade one going a mile and seven eighths. Not too many people know that. And Suave Dancer was by Green Dancer, who was by Najinsky, who was an unlucky neck beaten, won the St. Ledger, and he's out of an alleged mare who won the arc twice. So for those horses to have that much speed and acceleration was phenomenal because bred the way they are, I mean, they could have been very one-paced. But I, I would have to stick with Suave Dancer for the turn of foot. Okay, Suave Dancer for the turn of foot. Um, could you please ask Cash... Um, could he believe it when Polish president got beat by Zilzal in the QE2 at Ascot, as I think they were both unbeaten going into the race, and they both showed great turns of foot, but Zilzal prevailed? Yeah, <clears throat> it, wasn't, it wasn't only that I was, you know, a bit startled or surprised to be beaten. It was the way he beat me. Yeah. No, no, he, he, he beat me from... I mean, when they put him in the stalls, I mean, Zilzal, Zilzal just showed more speed than I did. I mean, Polish president had a nice foot, and you were close on the undefeated. I think that Polish president might have run once at two at Maison feet and pulled up bad. They had to take a little piece of bone out of his leg, and then he came back and fought, ran him, I believe, in a maiden, and then three group threes. So after he won his third G3, in a row, he was probably carrying 10 to 15 pounds more than the horse that was in the race. But Fob did that intentionally to build the horse's heart. Then he won a G1. Then he ran up a Zilzal. But uh, Zilzal, he, he had me from the get-go. I, I, I never... I mean, Walt, I believe Twinburn rode. I believe Walter rode him at the time. But I, I know he was a, a bit of a horse that was on his toe all the time. No, I mean, I was a clear second, but I was never... I didn't feel I was ever a winner. I mean, I've, I've got a list here, Cash, of, of some of your some some of your victories and some tremendous names that you you, you remember. I mean, a Soviet star, a Polish president, was just one of your many winners of the Mulan. Um, the Pula Pula and the King Mambo, of course, East of the Moon, In the Wings, Helicio, Suave Dancer we've mentioned. And then I come over to the, 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 your, some of your big wins in, in England. King Mambo, obviously, again, and In the Wings. Um, all, all top notches, Cash. People often ask you, I'm sure, who was the best? Which is the best horse that you rode? And someone emailed in, just just asking plain and simple, which was the best? See, that's, a, that's an easy question to ask. And, of course, it's asked because it's hard to answer. But what I want the people to ask is, because it's only fair, if you're, if you're a true racing person, this is the only fair question to ask, if you want a correct answer. Who was the best horse that you've ever ridden over a certain distance, or who was the best horse you've ever ridden at an age? The best two-year-old that I ever rode was Kuda Genie. And Kuda Genie won the pre-Salamon against the boys, and she won the pre-Morning. And she's a half-sister to Exit to Nowhere and Hydro Kalido from a famous mare, Kuda Foley. But she's the best two-year-old I ever rode. The best horses over a mile and a half would be Suave Dancer and Montjuic. Even though I'm very, very attached to Swap Dancer because my father bought him, owned the dam, some sisters, all of that, a very family horse. But I still think Mont Drew was better than Swap Dancer. But that's over a mile and a half. Yeah. And there's a very distinct possibility that Spinning World was a better miler than King Mambo, even though King Mambo turned out to be the sire. When Spinning World won the Jack Lamar Walk for the second time on some soft ground, I'm sorry to tell you, I, I really respect you and I have a lot of time for you, Jason, but I'd have rode Spinning World, you'd have rode King Mambo. <laughs> 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 I, love, I love you, baby, but I'm not sure I love you that much. <laughs> but I'm just being honest. Like, so I think the fair question is, is those are the best modelers and the best uh, Spinning World, five G1s, different continents. Yeah, I mean, just, uh, just anything. Mon Ju, best mile and a half horse. Kuda Genie, best two year old. Best, best feeling of the world was when East of the Moon won the Jack Lamar walk. If anybody looks it up, there was about five five year old studs in there, and she had just won the pre Diane 
won the Prix d'Anne over a mile and three sixteenths when she was basically just a miler. Avenged the defeat Mies Cardam, who was beat by Indian skimmer Steve Coff and Henry Cecil, I believe. In the uh, Mies was beaten in the Prix d'Anne, and her daughter East of the Moon avenged her defeat. But when East of the Moon won the Jack Lamar while going a mile at Deauville, he just. Yeah, you, you just don't. I don't remember. I don't remember any better than that, mate. I'll just. So that, that's the fair question. I gave you about four, but I gave you different. No, 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 years. no, no, no. We're liking that. We like. We like that angle. Now, at the end of the year, Cash um, jockeys who've kept themselves in a decent sort of shape, unlike myself, like you, still out there jumping on horseback now and again. We've been having this legends race at Doncaster for retired jockeys. Julie Crone won it, of course. I think you you may well have heard about that. Would there be a possibility that you may come and come and just show us a little bit of that magic again over at Doncaster at the end of the year? Ooh, I don't know if it'll be the end of this year. It might be the end of next year. <laughs> I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm getting ready to go to Hong Kong here. I just sent four horses on the plane over there, and they have their, yeah, their it, big international sale. It, it'll be September next year. It's the end of next year, Cash. You're bang on. Would, the, would there be a possibility? Because there's so many people on, would Cash. love to see you just, um, just get out there on track again. Uh, no, no, no promises. But I am. Uh, I'm. I'll put it this way, I'm a little heavier than when I was at Royal Ascot, but I'm damn near as fit. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's good. Cash, we will definitely get in touch with you. It's for a fantastic cause, the Injured Jockeys Fund, and they're building a massive house, a new complex up the north of the country. Super. Sorry, buddy. Super. All right, that's that's perfect. Anyway, Mate, good, good to talk to you. It's been fantastic to talk to you, and uh, many many happy memories. All the best to the family. Ah, uh, thank you.